Rambling reporter speaking. We're on our way to Siam. Kipling said east is east and west is west and never the twain shall meet. But someone told us that when he made that statement he'd forgotten about Siam. So we're going there to check up on Kipling. Siam is a country a little smaller than France. It lies in India and China at the top of the Malay Peninsula. It has a population of 10 million people and 10,000 elephants. The capital city, Bangkok, is called the Jewel of Asia. We're going to look over this city and find out whether it's east or west. Our first view of Bangkok, with these wide avenues, imposing buildings and monuments, reminds us of Paris. We're surprised to find a place like this, so far east of Suez, we expected scenes like this. A sort of ideal oriental city with gilded temple spires rising up against the sky. A city where commonplace things like bridges are ornamented in the eastern fashion with this old religious symbol, the curious seven-headed cobra. We were looking for shrines and sacred images a Buddha. Well, as a matter of fact, when we begin to explore Bangkok, we're not disappointed. There are 390 Buddhist temples in the city. These marvelous buildings are covered with gold leaf and tiles in brilliant blue and red. And around the roofs hang thousands of little bells that swing to and fro with every breeze to remind the people of the presence of the gods. And these are the tinkly temple bells that Kipling wrote about. Kings of Siam have spent millions of dollars on carvings to ornament the gateways of these temples. And the poor people have contributed millions of bits of broken glass and china to be set in the plaster walls in intricate mosaic patterns. Nothing has been spared to make these buildings beautiful. We find this one constructed of pure white marble brought all the way from Italy. And in the temple courtyards, we see these fantastic animals and stone giants that keep watch over the shrines and frighten away the evil spirits. And all this makes the Western world seem a million miles away. We begin to think that Kipling was right. East is East. But turn to the Royal Palace and see East meet West even in architecture. This roof resembles a temple, but beneath it is a typical European building. And out in front, His Majesty's guard snaps to attention with a real western click of the heels. The religion of Siam requires every boy to devote a few months of his life to the temples. So we see these young men with their hair clipped short, wearing long yellow robes, on their way to their religious studies. For the time being, they give up all worldly pleasure and live the lives of priests, an Eastern idea. But in direct contrast to this, every Siamese boy must serve his term in the army. We see companies of them swinging along the streets, and they're just as much at home in an army uniform as in the yellow robes of the priest. And so East becomes West. The river and canals of the city belong to the east. Here's a floating population of people who spend their entire lives on houseboats and canoes. And they rarely set foot on shore because everything they need is floating around them. Shops, markets, nurseries. They have all the comforts of home, including plenty of running water, which they don't often use. They live a simple life. They wear the same sunbathing suits all the year around. And for amusement, they squat on the decks of their little boats, gossip, and chew betel nut. Betel nut takes the place of chewing gum in the east, and it turns the teeth black. But these young ladies of Siam consider black teeth a mark of beauty. 
And we visit a native bazaar. It's typical of the East from its flies to its beggars. The man you see lying in the street isn't as dead as he looks. His religion forbids him to ask for arms, so he lies there and hopes for the best. Not far from the native bazaar, we find a street which seems to be just about midway between Orient and Occident. There's every kind of traffic from rickshaws, carts, bicycles and streetcars down to first vintage Fords. They keep to the left instead of the right. But the policeman in the traffic tower is surely a modern improvement from the Western world. Siam is called the land of the sacred white elephant. Now, as a matter of fact, there's no such thing as a white elephant. If they need a sacred Siamese elephant for a parade, they simply whitewash a gray one. The king of Siam keeps a large collection of elephants in his stables, and each of them has his own valet, butler, and chef. They feed him by hand and give him a massage and a manicure every day. They call him my lord the elephant, and nothing is too good for him. They consider the elephant a gentleman, a scholar, and a fine judge of peanuts. And every morning he must have his bath. So with his valet on his back, my lord the elephant marches through the palace gate while the sentries stand at attention and makes his way down to the river. Oh, by the way, if you should ever keep an elephant for a pet, it's well to remember that the elephant requires plenty of water and a thick poultice of mud now and then to keep his delicate skin in good condition. Even wild elephants are very particular about their skins, and they'll often travel 20 or 30 miles in the night through the jungles, just for a dip in the old swimming hole. In addition to the petted and pampered elephants of the king, there are 10,000 honest, hard-working elephants in Siam who do everything from landscape gardening to logging. In spite of his tremendous size and strength, the elephant is very easily trained and his trunk is the most efficient single unit on any machine. It will pick up a steel girder, thread a needle, or trim the front lawn. When we see these elephants walking through the streets and living the life of Riley in a royal palace, we're again inclined to believe that Bangkok is an eastern city. But we go out to the big parade ground to watch the army maneuvers and we see East go completely West, including the music. Here's a detachment of modern field artillery, boys in khaki who know how to unlimber their guns like old timers. And it's very different from the old days when the Siamese cavalry rode on elephants and the infantry carried umbrellas to keep off the sun and the artillery used gongs instead of guns to frighten the enemy. It's not likely that this army will ever have to retreat, but in case of accidents, you see, they know how to make a quick getaway. Bangkok is a city of contrast. While the artillery drills on the parade ground, back in the palace, the king's dancing girls rehearse an old Eastern religious dance in which human beings, gods and demons are all supposed to take part. And nothing about this performance has changed for hundreds of years. The girls with the black masks and prominent teeth represent the demons, and those with the whitewashed faces represent human beings, princes, princesses, and whatnot. And those who take the part of gods wear golden masks. These little dancing girls are sent to the palace by their parents almost as soon as they're able to toddle. And by the time they're 10 or 12 years old, they're accomplished dancers. And when they retire from the ballet as old ladies of 19 or 20, they take home enough gold and jewelry to lift the mortgage on the old family rice farm. Looking at these young ladies, we decide that the Siamese dancer's fortune isn't her face or even her legs. It seems to be a question of how far back she can bend her fingers and how well she can twist her toes. Yes, Bangkok is a city of strange contrasts. If you should happen to go there on an official visit to the king, he'd send a parade of elephants like this, all dressed up in cloth of gold, down to the station to meet you. And you'd ride through the streets like an oriental potentate. But when you arrived at the palace, the king, who was educated at Oxford 
and speaks English just as well as you do, would probably turn on his radio and tune in on your old friends, Amos and Andy. As we sail away from Bangkok, we're convinced that Kipling was wrong. East does meet West in Siam. The Rambling Reporter is signing off. See you again soon.